Hi, in this video we're going to explore the basics of cells and in this video series we're going to explore the anatomy and function of the different parts of a cell. Now, cell theory is a set of three principles that aim to describe cells. The first tenet is that the cell is the basic unit of life. This is an idea we've already visited. Now if the cell is the basic unit of life, that means that all organisms must be made of cells, whether you're a single-celled organism or a multicellular organism like you and I. And that is the second tenet. So all organisms are made of cells. Now the last tenet of cell theory has to do with cell division. And this is the idea that all cells came from pre-existing cells. So all cells came from pre, or I should say come from all cells come from pre-existing cells. This means that cells don't just appear when you put the right ingredients together. Cells actually have to come from other cells and this occurs through cell division, a process we're going to talk about in detail in later videos. Now all cells one of the main function of all cells, that is, is to read their genetic information, take that message, and do something functional with it. The way this is carried out is a process called the central dogma. Now this name is actually a bit of a misnomer, and even the guy who invented this term later said, eh, I think I didn't really understand what dogma meant. So don't get hung up on the name, but understand the process here. And this is a process we've already mentioned. This is how a cell takes that message encoded in DNA and it transcribes it. It transcribes that message into RNA. And that RNA message is then read and translated into a protein, something functional for the cell, something that's going to carry out processes in the cell. So this last part where RNA is translated into a protein, this part of the process is carried out by these special functional units called ribosomes. So ribosomes are complexes of RNA and proteins and they take that RNA message and turn it into a protein. So they build proteins. These are like protein factories, more or less. Now, RNA, I'm sorry, ribosomes are not considered to be organelles. This is because they are not enclosed in a membrane. Now, we already have talked about prokaryotes. These are one of our cell types. So prokaryotes, one of their defining features is that they don't have organelles. Now even though prokaryotes don't have organelles, they must have ribosomes, right? Because if they're a cell, they have that genetic information and they need to do something with it. That's what ribosomes do. So prokaryotes have ribosomes, but it turns out that their ribosomes are actually different than the ribosomes found in eukaryotes. And we call their ribosomes 70S ribosomes. That 70S is actually a unit of measurement. It's a little bit of a cross between weight and density, but you don't really need to worry about that. Just know that 70S ribosomes are found in prokaryotes, and we'll talk about the ones in eukaryotes in just a moment. So 
The defining feature of prokaryotes that their name points to is the fact that they lack a nucleus. So in Greek, carrion means kernel. And early, early on in biology, when scientists were just kind of discovering and looking at cells, they noticed that cells, some cells anyways, had this dense region in the center of the cell. And they called that the kernel or the nucleus. So prokaryotes don't have a nucleus. And pro means before. Remember, these are some of the oldest life forms on Earth. Well, prokaryotes really just means before nucleus. These cells arose before the nucleus. So even though prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, they obviously have to have DNA. And they actually store their DNA as this dense mass in the center of the cell that we call a nucleoid. What does that mean? Well, you may have heard the term humanoid before, right? To describe something that's kind of human shaped. Well, that's just what nucleoid means too. It means that it's not a nucleus, but it's kind of got the form of a nucleus. Now, of course, there's a major difference between the nucleoid and the nucleus, and that's that the nucleoid has no membrane enclosing the DNA, whereas the nucleus is a membrane-enclosed structure. We'll talk a lot more about the nucleus in a later video. Prokaryotes also tend to have a cell wall. And this is a rigid protective structure that's actually in large part responsible for giving prokaryotes their shape. Without the cell wall, prokaryotic cells would kind of just collapse in on themselves. Uh, picture a circus tent that's kind of falling in on itself, right? With the support beams gone. Well, that cell wall is kind of like the support for the cell. It's rigid, so it holds the cell's shape. Now, some prokaryotes have motor structures, and these are called flagella, but the singular is flagellum. So this single flagellum here carries out motor functions. This can be uh, cell motion. This can help cells move around. It can also be other motor functions, and we'll get into the specifics of flagella in a later video. Now, all cells, doesn't matter who you are, contain cytosol. Cytosol is a dense medium in which, well, pretty much all the biochemical reactions of a cell are carried out. Actually, I want to take that back. There are a lot of chemical reactions that we're going to talk about specifically that don't occur in the cytosol, but many of the processes going on in cells are happening in the cytosol. Now, eukaryotes are different from prokaryotes in a number of ways. The most standout differences, however, are the presence of organelles like these two I'm circling you might remember that these are mitochondria these are membrane bound organelles and also eukaryotes have a nucleus so eukaryotes can also have flagella but they can also have another motor structure called cilia. And again, we'll talk about these in a later video. Now, I said that eukaryotes have a different type of ribosome than prokaryotes. And we can see some of these eukaryotic ribosomes here attached to this structure. We'll talk about those ribosomes, why they're attached to that structure, and what that structure is for in a later video. For now, what I just want you to know is that eukaryotes have ribosomes 
that are called ADS ribosomes. Remember, that's kind of a unique measurement. It has to do with centrifugation, which is a lab technique that biologists use. And basically, all you need to take away from this is that the eukaryotic ribosome is a bit bigger than the prokaryotic ribosome, which shouldn't come as much of a surprise considering the difference in cell size. Now, let's flip the page and take a look at some of the differences and similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes.